And then we realized eventually that they were able to go in and out as they pleased by the end of things. In, and we asked one of the entities, someone asked on my behalf and said, why is it that you can get in and out of Mike's personality so readily? And they said something to the effect of, all human beings have a door that will keep other spirit beings out. And in most people's cases, the door is locked and barred and stapled shut and roped shut and sealed. And they said in my case, it was virtually hanging off the hinges. The first time I ever talked to Tobias was uh, on an airplane in 1997. And uh, I wasn't particularly spiritual or metaphysical. Um, I was in the business world at the time, and Tobias came in on this plane flight and started talking and, and uh, hasn't stopped since. But uh, uh, initially, it was just me talking to Tobias. I hadn't even told Linda about it. And how long did it take you before you um, broke it to Linda? That this it, was about a, it was about a year. So you kept it yourself for a year? Yeah. I received what felt like, what I experienced to be a telepathic contact from Bashar and his people. In that moment of the telepathic contact, a memory actually came back of having made an agreement somewhere prior to this life to do this. I grew up in a Roman Catholic family of Sicilian immigrants. Most of them even today, after I've been channeling Joseph for 15 years, don't know what I do. They have some idea, because I don't talk about it to them, and they don't ask me. They know I do something weird. I was very lucky. I had a lot of support. Um, my friends were very accepting. And that's one thing that I've always been really open about. I didn't really hide it, um, even from employers, you know, and I... I've always felt it was really important for me to be honest about that because I saw how it impacted people. I started in a class where we were really studying making a trans bridge, a, uh, an intrapsychic bridge to other sources of intelligence. And so it started in the context of that class. See, I thought that all of these esoteric things were for uh, older women over 40 uh, and it would have nothing to do with men. So I was dragged to these two guys who channeled for me and there was something, this was uh, three years apart, they both told me the same thing. And that is when I had to start looking at how could guys 20 years apart in age, three years apart in ID who never knew each other, give me information that was identical. And the information just happened to be that there was a master named Cryon who I was supposed to get a hold of. He says the grain plain, the master's grain plain, for harvesting the nations, uh, for, for harvesting the multitudes of the earth into his cause just before the close of the great controversy between the forces of good and evil. So we continue, you know, after we uh, express ourselves that we're deeply interested to know more about the activities of spirits. And he said it's going to be done in a unique manner. This, this grain plain says it's, it's going to take people, people are going to eat the stuff. Because he says, Spirits, demon spirits, will declare themselves to be inhabitants of far distant planets in the galaxies that are coming to warn the inhabitants of planet Earth of the impending destruction of the planet. Unless something seriously proper is done to avoid it. Due to the fact that the millions of the Earth people believe in having people having an immortal soul is readily, readily accepted when the spirits will, through a trans medium, converse with influential people. The languages. Now, what is a trans medium? It's a channeler today. What, what is known today as a channeler? Channeler, yeah. Okay. Uh, Shirley MacLaine's experience of getting involved with spiritism and with the uh, inhabitants, suppose inhabitants of far distant planets in the galaxies. I taped the whole thing in three hours. And you were hearing the fulfillment of exactly. what this high priest had said yeah. 45 years ago. Yeah, exactly. So, he went on explaining about the fact that the spirits will show themselves willing to give valuable guidance that will not only help people avoid the destruction of the planet, but it will cause them to enter into a higher state of existence. For instance, he said the spirits will, will uh, promise 
this is a big word promise that if their recommendations are followed carefully they will usher in a glorious new age of peace and prosperity and there there will be um, well there will be no more wars see uh, there will be no more famines there will be no more uh, people getting uh, unhappy with one another neighbors will love neighbor and uh, social unrest will not take place no more an arrangement so to speak was made prior to the physical life of the channel within what you would call the oversoul of the channel of which I am also a part we are part of the same soul you might refer to me as the channel's future self and incarnationally speaking I would look at the channel as my past self just to put it in linear terms we are not happy with the way that things exist currently in our reality all right we are from what you would perceive to be the future and we have come back to our past so that we may learn all right and so that we may assist the planet because what's going on now is going to impact the entire universe well we would prefer that you ask us if you like there's nothing in particular we would like to say except that we're here and it's very very pleasant to be here it's a delight it's uh, part of uh, sharing it with the big S if you might say the archetype of sharing is something we enjoy embodying I've had many many lifetimes on earth I have deep love and compassion for humans because I remember what it was like to go through the things that humans are going through now I remember the challenge in particular the challenge of knowing at some deep level that you are a spiritual being. Our goal is simply to help people live a more joyful, abundant life. And whatever it takes to achieve that, we're willing to do. And so that, in a nutshell, if you will, is uh, our work. You sit in the energy of a great shift. Many of you are feeling it. Maybe that's why you're watching this now. Maybe there's something that has happened in your life that would allow you for a moment just to open your mind and look inside something you always thought was untenable before only reserved for those on the lunatic fringe before and here you find instead wisdom pouring out perhaps you'll even feel the love of God pouring out there's a lot of things that are being transmuted and altered at this time All right? you're finding some things out about uh, some of your religious leaders uh, you're finding some things out um, about religion that just isn't holding true to you. It's not ringing true to you anymore. Well, we want to tell you this, is that there is so much here that is hiding. But you must feel it. There has been such a shift in these last years, especially in the last 20 or so. You're remembering who and what you are, and it doesn't need an intermediary. This uh, changeover from the old religious system that so many of you are familiar with a, is difficult very difficult because it holds on tightly those who have such a strong concept of God as some higher authority and is the only creator they want to hang on to that dearly they fear letting God go their, their old God you see because they are so out of touch with themselves they can't possibly even contemplate what it's like to have to go inside they claimed to be uh, distinctive entities in other words if the if they had a name they would say their name if they had a purpose or a, a distinctive they would tell you that uh, in in many cases but the the range would range from very what we call low level life forms that really didn't seem to have any purpose except to be pranksters that sort of thing uh, on up to uh, through the through the sort of human range right on up to the what you call ascended masters the the wise benevolent powerful type uh, entities and the antithesis of that the evil um, powerful um, intelligent uh, entities as well they claim to be ascended masters, um, highly advanced spirit beings even on other planets, people on various astral planes who had reincarnated and then gone on to perfection, 
uh, Tibetan Buddhists, people from the past. I mean, there was an entire realm of things that they called themselves. However, the common thread was they were all spiritually pure and were contacting our little group specifically to help us evolve spiritually. Uh, there's no question in my mind now that they were demon spirits. Warder often witnessed strange occurrences. He feared the darker controlling entities, one of whom regularly threatened him with knives. Still, he was fascinated by the spirit's powers. Uh, one evening when I was over at Mike's place, we were uh, just sitting talking when all of a sudden a one of the entities popped in and became visibly angry with I think primarily myself and um, began ranting and raving I can't remember the exact words he was saying but he, he got up and sort of stormed off into the kitchen my habit being to always follow Mike into the kitchen or anywhere where, where there were knives present and so I just followed but I was very concerned with what was going on uh, as I got to the doorway of the kitchen, uh, Mike, quote, Mike was standing and had picked up two Coke bottles off the counter, two 26-ounce Coke bottles, and held them both out in front of him and crushed them simultaneously, one in each hand. Uh, then, unfortunately, Mike, the entity left, and Mike was not able to come back right away. And in that delay time, uh, Mike fell forward into the broken glass uh, cutting his, I don't know if his hands were cut at that moment or when he actually crushed the bottles, but they were cut fairly badly. Um, he was obviously in shock when he came, when he came back. I got him up, moved him to the, to the couch in the living room, uh, and again he was taken over, this time by another entity which seemed much gentler and more benevolent, and held out his hands in a very almost pathetic sort of way and said, do the wounds on my hands seem familiar to you? and now we had an entity who was claiming to be or imitating Christ. Then, I would have believed entirely that they were higher beings, a higher spiritual order of beings. I wouldn't have believed in demons. I didn't think they existed. I thought they were an invention of the Christian church. In retrospect now, I can see back with horrible clarity that they were malevolent, created, demonic spirits intent on our destruction. In my own case, I recall that some of the entities we had to deal with were overtly violent, almost psychotic. And the others were pure and altruistic, and all they wanted to do was help us, and they would warn us about things that the nasty entities were doing, and they would give us teaching and methods of developing ourselves and so on. In retrospect, I'd like to say that all the entities were equally evil. It was the clever way it was presented by showing this group as overtly evil that made us more ready to accept these guys as the good guys. In reality, they were all in it together. In evaluating the situation, the reason they appeared to be good or evil was to create a contrast and also to create uh, further deception. You know, it was obviously that the whole thing was, it was, an, it was an incredible deception, but uh, it would have had no credibility if it was obvious as a deception. Obviously what spirits do is warp people's perception of what reality is about. And I think one of the difficult things is that you are really dealing with people who are being duped is the best word I could say and in that handing over of themselves to this power in that handing over they're going to see that as good stuff and not see that they are moving towards some very destructive things for themselves and for others. Spirit channelers and mediums from all walks of life claim contact with the spirit realm. The purpose of this contact, supposedly, is to teach mankind to achieve a higher state of consciousness through the knowledge they present. A classic example is Jay-Z Knight, a highly successful spirit channeler who channels a spirit calling itself Ramtha. Ramtha's School of Enlightenment claims to reach some 60 cities in 26 countries around the world. In this interview, shot in 1998, Knight explains how she came in contact with her guiding spirit. This was like an angel in my kitchen. You, do, you don't have time to react. You don't have time to, to, to rationalize this in your life. This is happening in your little kitchen. You just, I just blurted out, you're so beautiful. Who are you? And he smiled. 
this beautiful smile lit up the whole room, and he said, I am Romtha the Enlightened One, and I've come to help you over the ditch. And I looked back up at him, and he said, Beloved daughter, he said, I have come to make you a light to the world. Equipped with a bad British accent, something that seems common among channelers, 